What's up guys, my name is Crescent. Are you selling one item? or a thousand items, multiple items, multiple different items together. Whether you're doing FBA or FBM, wholesale, arbitrage, or private label, I'll show you which barcodes are required, how they need to be placed on your product, exactly how many barcodes you'll need to buy, and the best place to buy them from in order for you to sell your product on Amazon. Okay, so first off, let's go over why you need a barcode in the first place. If you're selling on Amazon, Amazon requires all of your products to have a barcode on it. If we take a look at the Amazon barcode guidelines page here, it says, fulfillment by Amazon uses barcodes to identify and track inventory throughout the fulfillment process. Each item that you send to an Amazon fulfillment center requires a barcode. So in order to satisfy this requirement, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Just kidding, that's not an Amazon requirement, but it would help out this channel and I would really appreciate it, so thank you. And with that said, in order to satisfy the barcode requirement, you need to have one of the following three barcodes on your product. The manufacturer barcode, such as an UPC, EIN, JAN, or ISBN. The Amazon barcode, also referred to as the FNSKU or FNSKU, or a transparency barcode. But the two main types we're gonna be concerned with are the manufacturer and the Amazon barcodes. So what is the manufacturer barcode? The manufacturer barcode is the UPC barcode we're all familiar with that's found on the exterior packaging that you or a cashier would scan at a checkout counter when you purchase something at the store. It lets the computer know what the item is and how much to charge you, as well as update the store's inventory tracking so they know what they sold and how many of that item they have left in stock. So with that said, it should be pretty obvious that the barcodes need to be unique for every product in the store. Otherwise, there would be no way to know what you bought, what to charge you, and to track how many of them they have left in stock. To put it simply, the barcode is like a social security number or VIN number of a car. No two people will ever have the same social security number, just like no two cars in the world will ever have the same VIN number. Now, the manufacturer barcode, which is also called the UPC or EAN, it's an international standard, so they're recognized worldwide. That's why if you're doing wholesale or arbitrage, which means you're reselling other manufacturers' branded products like Colgate toothpaste or Nike shoes, regardless of where you bought your inventory from, the UPC barcodes found on those products are recognized anywhere around the world. Similarly, the Amazon barcode, which is also called the FNSKU, it's also used to track products. However, it's only used on the products that are sold by FBA within Amazon's marketplace. It looks something like this. And just like the name entails, the Amazon barcode is only recognized internally by Amazon. If you try to scan the FN SKU at a retail store like Costco or Walmart, it's not gonna work. So what's the difference? Why are there two types and which one should you use? If we take a look back at the guidelines, we can see here that it says, by default, Amazon will use the manufacturer barcode to track eligible inventory throughout the fulfillment process unless you change the barcode setting. What that means is your inventory will be co-mingled with the inventory of all the other sellers selling the same product. Now that's fine and all, but what that means is if you're not the only seller of that product, Amazon will ship whatever inventory they have on hand to send to the buyer. That includes inventory that other sellers have sent in where you don't have any control over the quality or the condition of the product. Now, if you're doing wholesale or arbitrage, this isn't such a big deal since all the inventory everyone buys was originally manufactured by the brand themselves. But if you're doing private label, this can become a huge problem since you don't know where the inventory is coming from. And because you own the product listing on Amazon, any bad reviews you get will hurt your sales. So ideally, you want the inventory that you ship to Amazon to sell to be separate from the other seller's inventory. So in order to do that, to keep your inventory separate from everyone else's, even if you're doing wholesale or arbitrage, you can't use the manufacturer barcode. You must use the Amazon barcode or the FN SKU. You can see here that it says, Amazon barcodes must be applied to all products that are not tracked using the manufacturer barcode. Okay, so to summarize, if you're doing wholesale or arbitrage, your inventory is already going to have the manufacturer barcode or UPC on it. However, if you're doing private label, you'll need to get your own UPC barcode. And what I suggest is, regardless if you're doing wholesale, arbitrage, or private label, always use the Amazon barcode or FN SKU so that your inventory is kept separate from any other seller's inventory. Okay, so, now that we understand what the difference is between the UPC and FNSKU barcode, 
and why you should use the FN SKU, how does the barcode need to be put on your products? If we take a look at the packaging and labeling guidelines, we can see here that it says, any FN SKU you use on a unit must be unique and must correspond to one unique product. For example, each assortment type, such as size or color, must have a different FN SKU. This is what I mentioned earlier about the social security number and VIN numbers, and that every product needing to have their own unique barcode. I'll show you a detailed example of this to walk you through it later on in the video. Now, each unit must have an exterior scannable barcode or label, which includes a scannable barcode and the corresponding human readable numbers that is easily accessible. This means that the barcode needs to be on the outermost packaging of your product, just like in the store so someone can quickly and easily find it and scan it. It can't be on the inside or covered up by anything. Remove, cover, or render unscannable any existing scannable barcodes on the outside of shipping boxes. For example, cover existing barcodes with opaque tape, or use a black felt tip marker to render the barcode unscannable. This prevents the incorrect barcode from being accidentally scanned during the receiving process. Now this should be pretty self-explanatory. Only one barcode can be visible on your product. So if you're doing wholesale or arbitrage, you need to cover up the existing UPC barcode if you're gonna use the FN SKU barcode. What I suggest is to just cover up the UPC barcode with the FN SKU barcode sticker. Okay, so does that make sense so far? Now the next issue is if you need to get the UPC barcode, where do you get it? Or if you plan to use the FN SKU, like I suggest, where do you get that? Okay, again, if you're doing wholesale or arbitrage, the products you purchase are already gonna have the manufacturer barcode or UPC on it that you can use. Otherwise, if you're doing private label like I do, then you are the manufacturer, so your product isn't going to come with a UPC barcode. So you're gonna have to buy a UPC barcode for your product. And in both situations, once you have the UPC barcode, you can then get the FN SKU barcode. You can't get the FN SKU without a UPC barcode. Okay, so where do you buy a UPC barcode? If we take a look at the barcode policy on Amazon, we can see here that it says, we verify the authenticity of product UPCs by checking the GS1 database. UPCs that do not match the information provided by GS1 will be considered invalid. We recommend obtaining your UPCs directly from GS1 and not from other third-party sellers selling UPC licenses to ensure the appropriate information is reflected in the GS1 database. And you can also see here that it says, if you don't buy directly from GS1, your listings may result in your ASIN creation or selling privileges being temporarily or permanently removed. Now in the past, people have been buying UPC barcodes from third-party sellers like Barcodes Mania and Nationwide Barcodes because they are cheap you can typically get barcodes from them for around $10 each, whereas GS1 barcodes used to cost $250 plus an annual fee. However, GS1 has recently lowered the cost of their barcodes. You can now buy official GS1 barcodes for $30 each. So as you can see, it's not worth it anymore buying from third-party resellers and putting your listing and account health at risk. And for that same reason, I don't suggest trying to save some money by applying for a GTIN exemption. It's not worth the hassle and having to jump through a whole bunch of hoops dealing with exemptions. Just buy a GS1 barcode for $30 and save yourself a ton of headaches. Okay, so now to the crux of this video. How many barcodes do you need to buy? This is actually one of the most common questions I get asked, so I'm gonna try to make this as simple as possible. Remember when I said every product needs to have its own unique barcode, like the social security number or VIN number? That's not quite accurate. Let's say you're selling this blue fidget spinner. This blue fidget spinner is considered one unit and every unit that is 100% identical to the blue fidget spinner will have the same barcode on it. So it doesn't matter if you have one unit or 10,000 units to sell, the same UPC barcode will go on every single one of these blue fidget spinner units. So with that said, you'd only need to buy one UPC barcode. Make sense? Basically, every product that is exactly the same from the product itself to the packaging, if you can't tell the difference between them all, they'll all have the same barcode on it. If there's any difference in the slightest way, you'll need to buy a separate barcode for that product. So as in another example, let's say you wanna sell the blue fidget spinner and a red fidget spinner. Each different product needs to have its own unique barcode, remember? These two separate products are considered two different units. 
so you'll need to buy two UPC barcodes. One for the blue fidget spinners and another for the red fidget spinners. All the blue units will have the same barcode on them and the red units will all have their own separate barcode on them. Now, what if you wanna sell a package of fidget spinners? Let's say you wanna sell a package of fidget spinners that's an assortment of different colors. It doesn't matter how many fidget spinners are included inside the package. The entire package of fidget spinners is considered one unit. So you'll only need to buy one barcode. That barcode will go on the outside of the box or package that all the fidget spinners come in. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And to help you understand, Here's a quick little test. Let's say I'm selling the blue fidget spinners, this light pillow in two different colors and two different sizes, and you wanna sell this snorkel mask bundle that comes with a GoPro case and charging cord. How many barcodes would you need to buy? You can pause this video right now if you wanna take a moment to think about it. Okay, did you figure it out? If you said six barcodes, then you're right. You'd need one barcode for the blue fidget spinners, one barcode for the snorkel mask bundle, and for the light pillows, since there's two sizes and two colors, you'll need an additional four barcodes for a total of six. Now, I also created this barcode flowchart to help you figure out how many barcodes you'll need depending on how you're selling on Amazon and what you're selling. You can download this flowchart for free on my website and I'll leave a link to it in the video description below. Okay, so where do you get the barcode graphic to put on your product? Once again, if you're doing wholesale or arbitrage, your product will already have the UPC barcode on it. If you're doing private label and you purchased your UPC barcode, you'll get a PDF of the barcode that looks like this. You'll need to have this printed on the product packaging or printed onto a sticker label to put on your product. Now, if you wanna use the FN SKU barcode, which I suggest you do, you'll need to change the barcode setting in Seller Central to use the Amazon barcode. Click Settings, Fulfillment by Amazon, scroll down to FBA Product Barcode Preference, click Edit, and choose Amazon barcode. I have a detailed video that shows you several other ways you can switch to the Amazon barcode, and I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. Now, if you navigate to your inventory management page in Seller Central, and in the drop-down menu, you can now click on the print item labels option here to get the new FN SKU label. You can download and save the label as a PDF and then email this to your package designer or supplier to have them put it on your product. If you wanna learn how you can customize the barcode label, change the design or add other labeling requirements such as the country of origin, I have a video that goes into detail on that and I'll leave a link to that video in the video description below. All right, now remember, if your product already has a barcode on it, you need to cover it up so that only one barcode is visible. So if you're gonna use the FN SKU, just cover up the UPC with the FN SKU sticker. And a pro tip, if you plan to sell your product at brick and mortar stores like Walmart or Target, as well as on Amazon, instead of having to create two different package designs, one with the UPC barcode and another with the Amazon barcode, you can just have your package design made with the UPC on it and the units that you're shipping to Amazon cover up the UPC barcode with the FN SKU sticker. Doing this will help you save some money by not having to stock two different package designs. Now be aware, the requirement to have a barcode on your product only applies if you're doing FBA. If you're doing FBM, the products that you're doing FBM with will not require you to print any barcode on the packaging since Amazon is never gonna see or handle your inventory. And last, some people are running into errors when they use their new UPC barcode when creating a new product listing. If you just purchased the UPC barcode from GS1, you may need to wait 24 to 72 hours, sometimes a little bit longer for the GS1 database to update before you can use the new barcode on your product listing. And in other cases, Amazon may require you to prove that you are the brand owner of that barcode. In those cases, you'll need to send Amazon the certificate of authenticity, which looks like this you'll receive this certificate when you buy your barcode from GS1. Okay, so if you wanna get in touch with me, you can find all of my contact details in the video description below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment or question in the comment section below. I answer every single one. And as always, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and do me a favor, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really does help me out and I'd appreciate it. And make sure you ring that bell so you never miss a future video. All right, thanks for watching.